Hello everyone, bringing you a video today looking at the basic kit issued to British soldiers serving in the Far East in the latter part of the Second World War, 1944-1945. Most of the kit we've looked at so far has been of Indian manufacture and that carries on in this video with the web equipment. What we have on the mannequin here is the cellular bush jacket, the Mark II steel helmet with net. We've obviously talked in the previous videos about the different options in terms of bush jackets, the battle dress blouse, shirt, trousers. Obviously, as I said before, the Angola shirt is probably the most common upper garment to be worn but I've used the bush jacket here because it works well on the mannequin obviously being designed to be worn untucked and being quite a long garment it looks good on a torso mannequin so that's one of the reasons for using this here to set off the web equipment. The web equipment is of course the primary thing we're going to be talking about in this video and what we have is a basic battle order set of 1937 pattern and this is fairly standard from theatre to theatre there are some bits missing which we'll talk about as we move this round. This is all of Indian manufacture as I say and if you're looking to recreate this kit, I would recommend looking for original Indian components of 1937 pan. Obviously, you can use British to some degree as well. The standard rules apply of avoiding the post-war 1937 pattern equipment with blackened fittings, obviously. There is also a set of Indian dye green equipment with blackened fittings, which was sort of India's answer to the 1944 pattern. It's not clear that that would have been issued to troops prior to the end of hostilities. It's fairly unlikely that that would have would have taken place due to it, the late manufacturing of that equipment. So stick with the standard khaki 1937 pattern equipment with brass fittings. Indian manufactured if you can get it. I would always say buy original web equipment, particularly if you're planning to look after it and, and not use it to, in too uh, harsh an environment, not battling and so forth. Uh, the reproduction web equipment out there is, is not brilliant uh, and I would always recommend original over reproduction. It's a little bit more expensive to, to get, but it's still out there. It's still relatively easy to source. That would be my recommendation is to get original web equipment, which is obviously what we have on the mannequin here. The basic set of equipment we have here, of course, includes the two basic pouches at the front here. These are Indian Mark IIs, which differ from the Mark I primarily in having drainage eyelets in the bottom. They appear around 1944, so they're fine for this later part of the war. Uh, Mark 1s will be a little bit more versatile if you're looking to cover earlier periods as well, of course. So, as I say, Mark 2s, three drainage eyelets across the bottom. That's the main differentiating feature between them. Standard 1937 pattern belt here, obviously, again, Indian manufactured. We have the L straps here supporting the haversack on the back, and underneath these, the braces are worn, supporting the pouches. So, pretty standard stuff in terms of 1937 pattern there, just the fact that it's made uh, out in India uh, for use uh, in the Far East primarily. And uh, this was by far and away the most common web equipment you would have seen at the time. Web equipment didn't have a very long service life in the Far East, so local stocks would have been used to resupply troops. So we have the Indian equipment on the mannequin here. We'll start moving this around now and talk about some of the other components as well. Looking at the right hand side of the mannequin here, the first thing to talk about, of course, is the water bottle carried down on the hip here. Standard practice. You have this carried on the brace ends in an Indian made water bottle carrier. As said, all the equipment we're looking at here, all the web equipment is of Indian manufacture. It differs primarily in having a buckle up or on the shoulder of the bottle here as opposed to a press stud. It's quite a distinctive feature of the design, of the Indian manufactured version of the design. And it's carrying a standard British Mark 7 enamel water bottle in felt cover. There's absolutely no reason not to use one of these, and they're by far the easiest of the various options to pick up. So we've got a, a standard Mark 7 water bottle in the carrier there. Moving on to look at the rear of the equipment. Again, it's pretty standard stuff here. We have the 1937 pattern haversack carried on the back. Of course, this web equipment being in battle order. This again being an Indian manufactured example. So that's something to look out for. Try and find an Indian manufactured example to use again. Uh, the uh, Indian manufactured web equipment being by far the most common in the Far East at this time. And this would carry a basically a fairly standard load of, of equipment in there. We've talked previously about the monsoon cape. I made a video about that, a standalone video about that, not really part of the series, but you sometimes see them rolled up and carried on the back of the belt using the supporting straps from the pack. So again, that's kind of a beyond the basics element you might want to consider, rolled up and carried on the back of the belt there. And one thing we're actually missing is a two-part entrenching tool in its carrier down here. These are sometimes seen in photographs, so they were carried out in the Far East to some degree, but they were often dispensed with, so it's not an essential part of the kit. In terms of the web equipment, you don't really need one unless you're recreating a specific set of photographs of a specific unit where they were carrying them. You also occasionally see them carried up underneath the haversack as well, or from the front straps on the haversack hanging down. So again, that might be a detail you'd want to recreate if you're trying to recreate something specific. 
The GS shovel was sometimes also carried and that would be jammed down the back of the haversack quite commonly as is seen in Northwest Europe as well and in Italy. So some various uh, additional items you might want to add on here, but this is absolutely fine from a basics point of view. There's no need to add on anything more at the back here. The final thing to look at, of course, is the left-hand side of the mannequin where we have the bayonet and whether or not you carry a bayonet and what type of bayonet you carry would of course be dictated by the firearm you've been issued. So if you're carrying a rifle, you're going to be carrying a bayonet. And there are two options of rifles, the rifle number four and the rifle number one Mark III Star. Now the rifle number four was making an appearance in the Far East in 1944 and was becoming, it became more common through the period into 1945. The most common rifle was still the rifle number one Mark III style, but you do see a mix and match even within units. You see men armed with the number four alongside men armed with the number, rifle number one Mark III star. So we have a bayonet here for, of course, the rifle number one Mark III star, which would indicate what rifle would be carried in this instance. This is the standard 1907 bayonet. You can see the long 1907 bayonet there. There were, of course, the shortened Indian versions of this. They are harder to find and photographs right through the end of the war show men carrying the full length 1907 bayonet so there's no need to go and get one of the indian bayonets they're a nice thing to have but you can use one of these and these are much easier to find there's absolutely nothing wrong with carrying one of these obviously if you were using a number four which is another option you could you'd, you'd be carrying the spike bayonet for the number four and this frog has actually been modified with a, a very rough hole made in the top loop in order to carry a number four spike bayonet. It's a standard 1937 pattern bayonet frog in form, Indian made of course, the two loops to go over the stud of the bayonet and then the loop at the top to go around the handle there. So I hope you found it interesting looking at this. As I say, this is part three, looking at the web equipment. We've talked about the other elements of the uniform and so forth previously. There will probably be another basics video in the series and then some beyond the basics videos talking about other options. Uh, I think the next video will probably be looking, looking at footwear, which is something we haven't covered. And then I'll make some Beyond the Basics videos talking about machetes and talking about some other elements of the equipment as well going forward. Hopefully you found it interesting looking at this, as I've said. If you have and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as ever, a massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It's really greatly appreciated. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch with me but you don't really use social media, there is of course an email address there as well. That's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.